I'm a pretty confident person for the most part, but um, I just feel like you just feel a lot more powerful, I want to say, you know, or or the fact that you've accomplished something, it just makes you feel that much more confident about yourself and like feeling like, oh, well, if I achieve this, then what next, you know? are live excellent yep. excellent we are live right now what's up iron men and beyond community busy <laughs> high achievers all over the world we got swimmers cyclists runners iron man finishers and wannabe triathlete of course how are you guys doing hope you guys are all having fun because now it's october we got what how many more two months two months everyone two months and it's Coach Shangri-La here and Binetta. We have Yesenia here who will help us uncover the subjects that we want to talk about today. Okay. Yesenia is from California and is live with us tonight. And we're going to talk about how to become a strong triathlete and stop being a novice. So, Binetta, we talk about strong triathlete. Yes. And I want to make sure that what is a strong triathlete for you? before we get started. Well, it's not being in a survival mode, kind of yeah. like by the end of it, you're like, oh my God, when is this gonna end? Well, we like, don't want that. Not being in that mode. <laughs> well, it is possible that it can be hard on the race, but you wanna be as much as possible, enjoy the race, what else? Uh, being confident yep. about what you're confident. doing and what, what you're going to do, not double, uh, guessing well, how do you say that not doubting yourself yes exactly okay. <laughs> being in control no fear you know instead of you actually being more on the defensive mode you want to be an offensive where you're being strategic in control and you want to actually finish that cross to cross that finish line strong that is a strong triathlete it's not about just space on on the other hand too, it's a bonus if you have a fast pace, which is what we're gonna be talking about because this athlete, Yesenia, came from being novice, but just finished a Malibu Olympic triathlon distance race we're in, you won't even realize that she just learned the three sports two months before that, and we'll uncover that. So today, if you are new to our group, say hello so we know who you are. And uh, also we want to know if you're actually can hear us or see us because sometimes we have technology difficulties. So make sure Binetta, Binetta is actually looking into who's on the line because this is a two way communication. So whenever you have questions, Binetta will read it. Okay, not just Yesenia, myself and Binetta. We see Portia, we have Gerardo, how's it going? Um, today, we're going to be talking about building confidence in ocean swim, okay? We're going to talk about how can you gain speed in all three sports, okay, while also learning them. That can be, some some people, it can be nerve-wracking, and we'll know about that if uh, Yesenia actually felt that. Maybe, mm. you know, Yesenia might actually say, hey, I was there, but here's what I did. Right. We want to, it's not about just me telling you my experience or what, how I've coached my athletes, but I want another person to actually say, you know, how they did it because each one of us here in Ironman and Beyond is helping each other. So let's make sure to say hi. There's also Vinetta. Ray, Ray is joining us. He's All right, saying Ray. he hears us. And yeah, good, good, good. Hello, Ray. Welcome. Okay. Other things, you know, it's definitely great to be a strong triathlete, but how about developing good eating habits you know if you're having if you're struggling on that not that you need to be you know like always good looking but actually just feels good that you're taking care of yourself in terms of eating habits so we're gonna also actually talk about that because that's definitely a bonus um how about how can you train triathlon without feeling pain or getting sick how can you manage your time because you know learning a new sport like really coming from zero can be overwhelming and then now you still have to work and you still have family to take care of right how can you balance that okay um how are how what are the things that you can benefit with this transformation is it only about sports or is it something where you can actually learn what you have 
learn on how to be better and stronger triathlete and then apply that concept to your life? Is that possible? Is that relatable? So we're going to talk about that. All right. So uh, before that, let me share you how we met Yesenia. So Yesenia, actually, you know, we were just uh, in Long Beach, California, and we were working out at the Bay and, you know, just out of the blue, she showed up and she's like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> Maybe I want to join you guys. Uh, you know, I, I freak out uh, in the open water. So she'll tell you more about that experience. Okay. Because she's brand new. And how did that go? Was that a fast transition? Hey, I want to be like you always showing up, always working out, or is that, is there some uh, struggle or resistance there? Right. So we want to talk about that. Uh, but then when, if you actually commit to yourself to being the best athlete you can be, what are those benefits that you can get? Okay. So I want to start off really quick. Who else here besides Yisenia, who two months ago just starting triathlon, maybe some of in the group are just calling in right now. And, you know, they're also new to triathlon, whether you're new to triathlon, new to running, cycling, or, uh, or swimming. Put your that, hands up. Let's see who's new here. Put it in the comments. All right. right Welcome, now. Jennifer. Welcome, Jennifer. Welcome. See. We see Gloria. Apis from Hi, different Gloria. states. Good. Welcome, Gloria. So raise your hand if you're one of those who actually, you know, would panic or be so scared about an ocean swim and you just wish that that swim is done and over and you can get on your bike, you know, or who here who actually have not learned how to clip, uh, clip, unclip your bike and then just scared of falling off, right? Because <laughs> like, you just don't know how to handle this bike, but hey, he wants you to learn it. Or who here like wants to get faster on running, yeah. all right? We have two newbies. Uh, Ray say, says he's new, and then Bernadette says he's, he's All right, new. welcome. Okay, because this training is for you, okay? So if that's you, if you can relate, this is for you, and I would invite you to actually take notes, okay? Take notes, because this is another athlete just like you who two months ago was also struggling of actually learning the new sports. But now she was like right here. Now she overcame it. Okay. Now it's just more of like, okay, how else? Like you get hungry. How else? What if I was able to do that? Maybe I can, there's more for me. Maybe that's you too. Right. You guys are excited. Okay. I see Josh, Josh. joining us. All right. He Welcome. says he's a novice swimmer. All right. And oh, this is perfect for you, Josh. Also, uh, he freaks out. In, Jennifer in water. also. All right. Okay. And some athletes are actually, I've been doing triathlon, but there is still something like, you know what? I can build confidence. How can I get that? And I'm sure each nugget that we are actually going to talk about can help you all. So yeah, for, for there are two, we're, let's welcome Yesenia from California. Ooh. Yesenia, how are you doing Yesenia? I'm so glad that you're here. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Okay, well, it looks like it's hot there. It's California, it's going colder now, but congratulations on your recent uh, Olympic finish, which was uh, Malibu. Malibu with ocean swim, rollers, and there's hills on the bike and also on the run. That was amazing. And if you don't have the transition, which is something that you need to still master, you could have gone like sub three hours too, because it was like 22 minutes on transition. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us more about it. How was the experience of actually, you know, being strong and confident on that Malibu Olympic triathlon? I love the race. I mean, it was lots of fun. Um, I know that my transitions messed up my time, but, you know, I felt pretty confident the swim, the run, the cycling portion of it was just absolutely beautiful. You couldn't beat the weather. And obviously Malibu itself, you know, just the view cycling down PCH was just yep. the best. Um, I'm, I'm really, I think it got me hooked, you know, it gets hooked and you feel like, okay, now I got to beat that time. Or now I need to improve this and so forth. Right. So I'm excited and looking forward to doing better at La Quinta. You know, that's my next goal. Awesome. Because right now, right here, you know, it was just, uh, I think a couple of weekends ago, you got sub two minute per 100 yard on an ocean swim. You have 17.11 miles per hour. And it's actually a PR for compared to your training bike. And it was, this one is Healy. 
and a sub nine minute per mile as a PR on the run because you usually don't run this much after yeah. a bike. You're you're fairly new. Yeah. How, how did that feel that you actually have a strong finish? And if we sum that up, it was actually sub three hours, but plus transition, which is 22 minutes <laughs> at both. But yeah, how did it feel that your first Olympic race, that distance, considering that two months prior to that, you can't even road your, ride your bike. Yeah. Tell me, tell us how it was before getting that coaching. How was it when you met us and saw us in Bayshore and then see us swim before you get all this help? How was it before training, work, life? How's it going? Yeah. So, so it was uh, May 30th that I just signed up just randomly for the Malibu try, not even knowing what a triathlon was, what I needed to do, any of that, right? So once I signed up, and it was just because I needed a lifestyle change, you know, I just wasn't healthy, taking care of myself, and my anxiety was through the roof, so I needed a change, right? So I just figured, okay, well, what is there? And I don't even know how I came across the Malibu triathlon, and um, just from one day to the next, I told Tony, you know what, we're just signing up, and let's just see how we <laughs> So we signed up. Um, and then, you know, Google everything, right? So Googling, what else do I need to buy? What do I need to get? What do I need to do this? And I bought my wetsuit sometime mid-June and we hit the water thinking like, oh, big deal. You know, you see the people swimming at the bay, you know, we'll try it. No way. There was no way. We were ready to quit. We tried it a couple of times. It was just miserable. We just felt like there's no way we can master this breathing technique, you know? So we would stop literally like every five, 10 seconds, we would stop and oh, breathe. No. How is it? How is it that we're going to get through this? And um, that one day was mid-June. We saw you with the group. Sure. And here I'm being nosy, right? So I swam up to you. <laughs> I swam to you guys, and then I just asked, you know, hey, you know, what is it you guys are doing? That's when you told me you were a coach. Fortunately, I had my cell phone, right? And um, I know and Andrea was the one that said, yeah, she has a great program. And she was sharing with me a little bit of what you guys were doing. And, you know, I was really, really interested, you know, right then and there, because I knew that I needed it. The race was coming up and that was all good and whole about it. So for, uh, fortunately, we connected, you know, a couple of weeks later, signed up for your program. And, um, and it's been learning since. And it's just been jam packing all of that and learning everything that you have to offer in your program you know in, in a matter of a couple months for the race wow oh, that's yeah amazing. it was a lot it was yeah a lot. um you said I, you said miserable yeah how, how was that when you say like is it literally while you were swimming in the open water you can't get your breathing right it's just right. like you have to like come out <laughs> right right but even just the swimming itself you know, I didn't know how to do this, the style of swimming, you know? So for me, it was, you know, you swim and that was it. And your head's out of the water. Oh, that, okay. I gotcha, gotcha. I didn't know your head goes in the water. I didn't know how to breathe. I didn't know the strokes. So, yeah. Well, I feel like this. You guys, you know, this was about, you know, that was June. So that will be two and a half months when you were struggling and miserable. And you signed up for ocean swim which you have no even an idea if you can actually do it and scared you do wait. know that you want a lifestyle change and you thought oh, okay there he goes triathlon let me sign up without even knowing the how but knowing what you want to achieve what? right which is very important because a lot of athletes get stuck with the how and not even do anything about it Okay. Is there anyone who would like to admit that you don't have to, but you know, I was like that too. It's like when you, you start thinking about the how without even committing to the what, then you get stuck. But then what you did is the other way around. You don't know the how, but you commit to what you want to achieve, which is a lifestyle change. And it's like triathlon. And then Malibu. the how comes. <laughs> and then the how appears. Yeah. And, and the how appears after, um, Okay, hopefully he, her, her video comes up. Okay, there you go. All right, so, so yeah, is there anyone else who can relate here where in, you know, the, the swimming was miserable? How about the bike portion? No, oh, hold on, I had another question about the swimming. I remember you said something very interesting. You said what was really bothering you for, about the swimming was that you felt that you couldn't stop. When compared to running and cycling, you felt like you could stop easily. But then in the swimming, you said something um, about 
not right. being able to. So, can you tell me about that? Yeah. So if you don't know how to swim the way I saw it, like, okay, you know, you know, if you sign up for a race and you're on your bicycle, okay, you stop, you move, pull over, whatever, rest or whatever it is, or take your time, you know, at your pace or same on running, you know, you can walk the whole race if you wanted to. Right. But when it comes to swimming, you have to get from point A to point B and you're underwater. And if you cannot, I think that would just completely kill your race. Right. Kill um, Fear. And then obviously, like I had told you ladies, I was super scared of the waves, super scared of, you know, especially Malibu waves. I mean, I had seen some videos and I started freaking out because once we signed up, I started Googling the races and I see the Zuma water and the waves and I knew that I needed something. I needed help. Anyone else who could relate to Isenia, how she's explaining it, where and you see the wave, and even in the YouTube video, you, you start feeling something because I was the same way before. Like, even I was not even there, I'm not even the race, but you know, I used to feel that way. <laughs> anyone else, anyone else, uh, raise your hand. All right. Um, but then there's also another thing where, and you bought your new road bike, mm -hmm. right? and, uh, and that is something that you have to learn how to ride it. Yeah, just to have a hybrid that's super new to you and actually you did not even know how to clip and clip your bike how did that feel you know like just okay yeah new bike yeah. so now I, what how did that feel nerve-wracking because i fell the first time i tried it <laughs> so the, oh, no. I fell and it just felt very flimsy and and you know i know that when you're on especially thinking long-term thinking oh if I ever wanted to do a half Ironman which at that time I hadn't signed up for anything like that and I figured okay with well, Malibu 25 miles maybe I can go without drinking any water because there's no way I can reach and take my hands off the handle so I'd have to ride without drinking any water can I handle that and um, sure enough when I rode it just how how different it was to a hybrid bike you know and I'm not a cyclist even to begin with right but just you know little cruising here and there down the beach path that was all that was my extent of cycling you know so when I got on it and I just couldn't handle the bike itself and couldn't even think about removing my hands off that handle I just felt like okay there you know how am I going to get through any type of cycling and it was it was a little disappointing it was discouraging because I made the investment um, it was a beautiful bike I loved it and everything but to know that am I even going to be able to master the cycling portion of it you know um and sure enough, slowly but surely, I'm getting there, and I'm still, I'm still a nervous wreck when I'm on it. I'm still a little anxious, and 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 you know, the handling, I still struggle with it. But I'm able to drink my water, eat my nutrition, no problem, and yeah, for sure, gained a lot more confidence. And maybe I've ridden with the cleats uh, four or five times now. And yeah, I mean, that it? four or five times clip exercise, 17 yeah. miles per hour is actually not bad. That's awesome. That's actually pretty good. So let, let's show how, how, uh, how this one was how Yesenia um, two months ago when she just got her bike and it was good to actually capture it because it's like more before and after. This was how she was two, two months ago. Like I'm telling you, she just learned the sport. She didn't even know what triathlon was. All right, let's try. All right, so relax, relax. Right. So first try first, first right left. Ah, you're okay. <laughs> you're okay. Yes, there you go. There you go. Good. She okay. could almost, you know, even just grabbing the bottle was really hard for her. <laughs> and in fact, she was and that was just that. <laughs> All right. You want to try again? Yeah. And as you can see, she, right now. she's not clipped yet here. She's not clipped. And she's just breaking out. And knowing that she needed to go Malibu, which is really poor, she's not yeah. safe. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Okay. All right. So that was a short video there. But that's how she was back then. Okay. That's how she was back then. Let me just close that one. All right. There you go. Okay. We're back. All right. So, yeah, that's what that's how she was uh, two months ago. The Olympic triathlon distance was Healy. Mm -hmm. It was. And you just learned how to clip about two weeks prior to that. And actually just today, you said that it was the fifth, sixth time. But what I'm curious about, and I'm sure a lot of our other athletes who's actually watching right now, why didn't you stop 
even though it was hard, even though you were scared, even though there's so much things that you felt like, you know, you got to learn, you know, why, why keep continuing? Is it because of the investment? Is that the main reason Like you already paid for it? So I might as well do it, get through it. For me, for me, it's more like a bucket list thing. You know, when I set my goals for 2022, you know, there's always, you know, quite a few things. And I feel that once I started training for the triathlon, honestly, I've been able to scratch off maybe four or five off of those, you know, and that's my weight. You know, I've managed to drop 80 pounds since um, my anxiety levels. How many about, pounds did you drop? About 20 pounds. Already? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. Okay. We'll, yeah. we'll touch base about that. Not that we <laughs> want to, you to disappear. Okay. So what yeah. else? Uh, the, you mentioned about anxiety earlier. Right, right. I mean, I know exercise helps the anxiety, but um, I didn't think it was going to be this much of an improvement, you know, and for me, it has been. I mean, obviously, you focus, you know, on something more constructive, which is the exercise program, you know, um, you know, coming home and knowing that I have that training peaks workout to, you know, to take care of. Um, it just makes me focus on something more constructive and positive, you know, when I get home. So just that shift. Um, I obviously I've told you I've quit the booze completely now. So help me with dropping my weight as well. Yeah. Yeah. So just, just a few little things that I feel I've been able to scratch off. And now it's a matter of completing that half Ironman, you know, um, or attempting to complete it. Right. So it you're makes me humble. You, you're going to have to complete it. It's not just completing it because what you're showing right now, is not just completing. I mean, your habits, I mean, if you, if you're just going to want to finish and I, I wanted to tell everyone, I think everyone can finish it, but then now how can you finish it without, you know, dropping the ball or of your other commitments yeah. without you injuring yourself? with you still being happy and actually feeling passionate about what you do. Cause right now that's what I'm seeing. It's not just about finishing that what you're doing. You're finishing yeah. strong. Yeah. It's been very, very enjoyable for sure. I've been so, I've been loving the whole program. And um, one of the things that you always mentioned was you want your athletes to enjoy what they're doing and be happy doing it, you know, and injury free. Yes. And I think that, that is in my mind, you know, and when I was racing, you know, like I told you, I kept on telling myself positive things and enjoying the view because ah, yes. finish the race and just feel like, well, wait a minute, what did I do? Did I enjoy it? Did I, what did I take in? What did, did I see the, you know, the coastal views and all that. So that's ingrained in my head. And I kept repeating myself, enjoy this, enjoy it, be happy. And, and that, that's mainly my goal there now, you know, now that I'm doing it, you don't want to be like Vinetta says, you don't want to finish it and be miserable and be hurting everywhere and say like, oh, I'm never, do never doing that again. And I want to be yeah. strong and, and feeling like, okay, yeah, you know, the training did work out at the end, you know, and it paid off. Good. So, uh, I mean, I want, I want us to be honest here. I I'm sure you have a lot of benefits, but during training, I mean, is it easy or is it hard? It's. Or is it it's, manageable or is it something that's worth doing it? No, it's been manageable. It's been manageable. Um, you asked me how many hours I can I invest a day, you know, so you know, I'll give it, you know, an hour to an hour and a half during the week. And then during the weekend, you know, I could, you know, spare more, more time. And the workouts you give me, you know, make it manageable where I get home, I put in my run or my cycling or my, or my, or my swim. And it's been manageable. I, I told myself one thing, I'm not going to neglect work Good. or my, you know, my family basically. Right. So, because I'm doing this as a little side thing for me, for, you know, personal thing, or, um, I don't want anything else to get, you know, sacrificed because of me investing time in myself. Got it. And fortunately, I mean, Tony's joining me. So it's a little easier, you know, the fact that, you know, we're doing it together for the most part, you know? Good. So, okay, good. I'm what, glad. Do you, what do you think was the, the most challenging in that area? In uh, or in training in in training in, in training in this whole process what has of... been the most challenging you think for me um as you know getting pool time for me pool time it, right. yeah pool time um i think i've been pretty flexible around you know whether it's i wake up super early if i know i can do it in the evening so i've been working on schedule so i've been making that a little easier for me but i don't fret too much and i'm not too hard on myself if i miss workout awesome. you know much as I want to, and, you know, I feel, you know, 
obligated to making that training peak uh, workout show red to show complete, I think is what it is. Um, if I don't, I mean, I, I can't be too hard, green. Hard for so. Yeah. You guys hear yeah. that? Not stressing out about missing one workout. It's not about just one workout. It's actually, you know, the overall is the accumulation of all those efforts. And it's not just about checking mark off. It's about how you actually execute those workouts. It doesn't need to be like one and a half hour or one hour, but it's more of like how specific you are on actually addressing of the most important thing that would bring massive result. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I follow I follow your plan exactly to the T. At least I'm doing my best there. Yeah. So it was me just choosing what to do. I always thought you run as fast as you could, as long as you could, and then you'll be there. And it's not that, you know? And so yeah. learning that there's a lot of other stuff and taking care of your body, the body maintenance, never in my life would I have thought that you need to do the stretches, the foam, the foam rolling or the right nutrition. I would never thought all of that came into play to be a healthy, you know, healthy and injury free. Because are you saying that you're not just swimming, cycling and running, you're doing several other things. So this is a good note for you guys uh, who is actually on the call is that it's not just about swimming, biking, running, and that's actually not the only ones that's showing up on the training peaks. It's actually including the body maintenance. Body maintenance, it could be the strength workout specifically, specifically for the athlete, because each one has different weaknesses and strengths that we need to work on. And then also the nutrition portion, also the mindset. Each athlete is different. Yeah. So, um, well, I wanted to show this one because this one is, again, this one is different. Um, we did talk about that. This one was in your running or coaching. You had told me that you, you can't, you know, the only fastest run that you've done is over 11 minutes per hour. I mean, 11 minutes per mile, right? And then this was, um, this was when I posted August 27. That was about, about a month in or maybe six weeks. Um, we're in you completed sub 10 minute per mile and you were so happy, <laughs> you know, it was basically a 12.7 improvement from 8, 3, August 3 to August 26, August 3, that was about, yeah. So August 3 and then August 26, that's about a month actually. And you were so happy to actually achieve that. But then now you're even on sub nine minute per mile now, and hopefully we see her because you are important. <laughs> All right. So hopefully she's coming back because we need her to come back. But while she, we're waiting for her, um, let's check out. Okay, there you go, Yesenia. So yeah, okay. so uh, as we were asking, you know, how did that feel? Because you came from 11 minutes per mile and up two months ago. And then now you're on sub nine minutes per mile. I mean, you were happy just, you know, getting faster under sub 10, right? Yeah. Now, I would run like you're seeing eight ish, and you even run your longest mile. You were not really, you know, a long distance running. And you, when you hit that half marathon mark, you're like, whoa, how did I even do that within two months? I yeah. mean, so how did that feel? And how, what did you do? Was it just following the training plan, or is there anything else that you did, like, for example, technique, or is there anything on mindset or ma management on time? What else did you do to actually do that without feeling pain? Because I don't think you feel any pain right now, right? No, okay. no. What else did you well, do to get faster? Having the knee pain at the beginning, you know, when I first started with you, I would have knee pain after runs or after cycling. And um, the training, I'm sorry, the actual workouts, the leg straightening workouts, I feel have helped me a lot. And taking care of my knees after and the icing and all of that. So I've been following that to the T for the reason that I don't want to get injured or I don't want to, you know, induce that any further. Um, but no, I think honestly, I'm, I'm really amazed that I have been able to achieve the, you know, the speed and the distance that I have been because I'm not a runner at all. I mean, when I first started, I ran to the park and I would keep stopping. And I'm sure you see my, my first workout. I mean, every three minutes I would stop because I couldn't, you know, my heart rate would reach super high levels. Um, I felt I couldn't breathe. I mean, it was just horrible. And I just felt like there's no way I could be a runner or, you know, and that thought, okay, well, I'll walk the entire thing and I'll just finish that way. But slowly, but surely, you know, I've been able to build up the endurance and it has been following your training peaks. Um, and now that you tell me 
go slow, when you tell me focus on doing 10, 11 minute pace, I have a hard time slowing down <laughs> that pace now. It's slow so down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'm, I'm really, really amazed how body, how the body just acclimates and, and, you know, it's just a matter of sticking to it and doing all the right, you know, workouts. And I, I feel that but I've been following also the nutrition and I never thought drink water in between or have your carbs and your electrolytes, all of that. Not once did I think it was that important. And so, like I said, following everything. So you see the change when you actually incorporated the nutrition portion, even just on training, not really on the race. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So okay. now you, let me, let me just check in with people. So who else here is experiencing knee pain right now? Because knee that pain, was, everyone. That was just saying two months ago, and now she's running fast and no knee pain. Yeah, raise That's your big. hand because we we could have some uh, resources already available in our and beyond, or if there's anything that we could help. Uh, actually, I, you know, you saying yeah, I totally, you know, like forgot about that. I remember you. I'm like, oh no, you saying yeah has experiencing knee pain this is what you're gonna get it's actually the first thing that i gave you before your training plan i said while you're waiting for your training plan i need you to at least start learning more about it and one of the uh one of the uh one of the master classes that i actually gave her was the bulletproof your knee and uh, this one is also in the uh feisty fox try basically on bulletproof your knee this is a training master class about one hour you don't really have to go through it but i give you you know the steps of what you need to do and it's not necessarily just exercise there's several things so this one is in our feisty fox triathlon academy and this is part of the body maintenance you know like people who are experiencing back pain for example for yesenia it's more of the low uh, no than the knee and that's what we needed to focus on. So with that said, no knee pain. Good job. Mm -mm. Yeah. And now you're going faster. Yeah. Awesome. And, yeah. and there was a discovery there around nutrition. Yeah. Tell us let's, more about that. Uh, about I'm nutrition. sure a lot of other athletes. Here, who here is ignoring their nutrition right now? Not really ignoring. It's just too much. <laughs> too much to think or like. Too uh, much to think. Too, yeah, exactly. Uh, I think a lot of other athletes are just confused of what like what's the right way i mean nutrition is very confusing honestly mm -hmm. there's so many different things oh keto oh this one you know like the different things but uh to me what works for the athlete is what we, we need to do is more of individual each individual what's best for the athlete because each athlete is different just like training but for you uh, we want to hear uh how did it go with the nutrition Tell us some tips. What or... changed like from where you were with the nutrition and then now? Well, a as far as during the workout itself, um, yeah. I never did any of the, or I didn't know the whole electrolyte potassium and, and um, sodium, how critical all of that was, or even the fact that you needed the calories during the run. Um, I would have never thought to do all of that during my incorporating it into my workouts, you know? So um, I've been doing good about, you know, testing out different products out there and finding what works for me and the timing, you know, I just feel like I, I listened into the nutritionist, um, to a few of his, uh, videos as well. And it's just been very, very helpful and just, uh, trying to incorporate that when your body needs it, because I'm more afraid of hitting the wall. Like you guys say, once you hit that wall, then it ruins your performance going forward. It takes you a while to get, but yeah. just listen to all the other athletes um, and what they've shared and what works for them and logging in, you know, to your, to your feisty fox, asking a question and having all these people give me their input, you know, what works for them has been a great help. Yeah. You say it's one of those asking questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good job. <laughs> she asked a lot of questions like, what about glutamine? Do you have any yeah. suggestion with glutamine? What about protein powder? What's the best protein powder? A good thing is that we what actually- about, What about caffeine? I like drinking coffee. Oh. oh yeah, 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 about caffeine. And you know, a good thing is that we do have the available answers already. And I always say, okay, just move your cursor here. So for example, how to choose the best protein powder here. And it's not just me who's actually teaching the athletes. Like I said, if I don't know, we have our resources. We have our registered dietitian, Jeff, who's actually doing that. And for those who wants to manage their weight. So for example, this one is with registered dietitian, Jeff, who helped me out with, uh, with my Guinness World Record second one last year, a game changer. 
is basically, you know, how to actually just be able to stay in the training. And this is a uh, just a reminder for everyone. If and I did remind our athletes too, if you know, when before triathlon and then now you're actually increasing the activity, you do need to actually have that right nutrition, enough nutrition. Otherwise, you could get sick. Yeah. yeah, you could get sick because you're not having enough, right? Or on the other side, you will not get also the high performance that you want to achieve if you're not sustaining it. Okay. Uh, do you guys are you guys getting those things? Uh, athletes, athletes in Ironman and beyond. We have Fanny actually, Pauline, Bernadette. You, you might want to read their names. Vanessa. Jennifer is here. Okay. Hi everybody. James is watching. All right. So uh, let me I have other questions here. Um, so how are you managing your time, Yesenia? I know we're spending some time with you here, so thank you for all that. So how are you managing your time, you know, uh, learning the sport? I know you're one of those who actually want to learn everything. When you were like mm -hmm. starting, I want to just give me everything. And I said like, yeah, yeah slow down. <laughs> I don't want you to overwhelm yourself. We need to yeah. focus on the main things. And I know yeah. I, you said James is there. James is the same thing. Slow down, okay? Baby step because your brain is not going to function. It's like so many attacking, like all the information. And it's yeah. more like addressing where or how can we make improvements first because we want you to be gaining confidence, having those small wins. So to, uh, how about share to us some tips that you do in terms of managing your time? Because I know you have family, you have your daughter, you have Tony, your husband. And then, you know, work, work. Yeah, work can be <laughs> also a lot. So yeah, how are you managing your time? Um, as best as possible. Um, I did, uh, I cut back a little bit on my sleep just to be able to have a little bit more time with the rest of the stuff. Um, at the beginning, I did do what I think most people do is uh, you, you want to learn everything at once and you get, you know, you get addicted or you want to call it, you're just <laughs> completely hooked, right? So I was sleeping four or five hour nights oh, just because no. I'm finding on your website or Googling this or Googling that and buying this and buying that or what I, you know, first to watch, first to a bicycle and everything. You want to learn everything at once, right? And you did tell me you're going to get burned out. And, and, it, and I did get overwhelmed there for a little bit. And um, then I figured, okay, you know what? I got to back off and just follow what she gives me um, just because it was too much. It was too much and not that I was neglecting anything else but it was just an overload that my mind was just like okay that's too much at once so um just learning to back off of that and just taking it a day at a time and knowing that eventually I'll you know bring in something new focus on that once I master that then what's next next yeah. step very good forward that very way good. and I think uh, a lot of it also is communicating of where you're at right so for example, when you're still afraid of the clipping, okay, let's put more time there. It's not mm -hmm. that I want you to focus on swim, bike, and run, but you'll see your training peaks actually focusing a lot on bike handling skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you said like, coach, I can't go to the gym for the pool yet. Okay, let's see what we can do, right? And actually more on building your confidence. I could now. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Do you have any other questions for you, Senya? uh yeah why did you why did you just go decide to do your best with this sport with the triathlon what motivated you to want to do it um well one it was that lifestyle change two it was now bucket list right personal goals um but three i think once once i started telling say friends family co-workers and then obviously you know now partnering up with you guys for me it was more you have um you're holding yourself accountable you know you have account you know you have you have to tell these people you're telling these people this is what i'm training for and people like to follow up on you on how it's going or you know they're so it'd be kind of discouraging for me to you know here i'm telling everybody hey well i signed up for this and and not giving it my best you know i like being able to tell yeah it's hard work however i'm achieving it but I think for me too, um, what's really, really encouraged me and keeps me going is um, when I do hear from the other athletes that, you know, in, in the, in the mem your other members and athletes, um, just seeing how they're people just like the rest of us. I always thought like, oh, person that does an Ironman, they're like pro 
athletes, they're natural born and blah, blah, blah. They don't have a job. They don't have families. That's all they do. And then when I started, you know, hearing, you know, from Michelle, Amy and all Christopher and all the things that they've accomplished. And these are people that work full time, have families and all that. And, and then um, very encouraging, very helpful. And just all the great advice that they share. I just feel like, okay, you know what? It is manageable. It is something that just an ordinary person can achieve. It's just dedicating, you know, that time a day and uh, being consistent. Yes. So, yeah, I, 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 I remember you, you saying that uh, sometimes when people talked about their challenges that helped you more than them talking about how they ach achieved the victories. Right, yeah. And so uh, mindset calls, or I think it, you call them mindset calls, right? Yeah. And people yeah. share, you know, how they performed at a, at a race and they share the pitfalls or the challenges or the obstacles or whatever um, and how they overcame that. I just feel it just helps the rest of us, right? Um, but it also gives you that that confidence that, hey, you know, everybody struggles, everybody goes through some challenges or everybody's gonna have some downtime. And it's a matter of just picking back up and, you know, just continuing where you're at and giving it your best. That's fair. So. Nice, nice. Yeah. So guys, share your challenges because other people are inspired and they're learning from it. And actually, uh, Yesenia said before when she joined is that, you know, Andrea or even Gloria, you know, mm -hmm. motivated and inspired her. Gloria, oh, yeah. Andrea, yeah. you know, and also just hearing about this athletes. Yeah, that's that's really awesome. Yeah, I and you know what, I think most of us, the majority of people we don't have family or friends that are into triathlons you know so who is it we're going to turn to and ask questions you know who is who is going to help you i know you've shared your story there you know and to be able to go online or message somebody that knows it and then have all the advice you know on the spot with these people that have been there done that and aren't you know doing the same thing and the same lifestyle or the same goals and and aspirations about the race um, it's been very helpful, you know, just the fact that it's a little community in a sense, you know, and, and it's a whole new world, a world that if you've never seen what a triathlon is or what a triathlete is or an Ironman, I didn't even know any of that just a couple months ago. Um, I, I was shocked with how it is a new world and <laughs> it's a fun one. It's been expensive, but it's been fun, you know, new people. Well, that, yeah. that kind of makes me curious because like, how did you even decide to to, you know, oh, I'm going to get coaching now, you know, what's the tipping point? What, what made you decide that? Yes, I need tip, uh, coaching right now and I'm going to do it as opposed to, I'm just going to continue watching YouTube videos you were doing and, and that. Googling and, and doing it myself. What made you decide for coaching? When we were ready to quit, when we just said, nope, this is not for us. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so, but then why Fox to Fox coaching? Cause there's, I mean, I'm sure hopefully you find something else, but you know, why, why Fox to Fox coaching? What changed that? Well, I mean, I know you have a lot of athletes, you know, across the U S for me, I mean, on, honestly, you know, for me, it's like a perk and it's great that I live here. You guys are somewhat local. So when we do, you know, the, the hands-on, you know, open ocean with you guys, I mean, it just helps me that much more. Right. Um, so I think being local is a big plus, but it's something you could still achieve. I see, I see how strong your other athletes out in Texas and Chicago and all of that. Um, and then for us in California, we have the added benefit that we could do the in-person events with you. Um, so that's been a huge, huge plus. But um, I remember when I first met you and I just said, hey, you know, do you think I can? And then you very confidently said, I, just stick with me. I can make you, I can make it happen, you know, and just, I think the confidence that you displayed as well helped me feel a lot more comfortable, you know, partnering up and joining your, your program. So, um, and, and then you gave me a few weeks, like testing it out. Remember you, you just said, okay, well, you know, come next week. And I went the following Sunday, I trained with you guys a little bit, saw your group, saw the environment, you know, and, and, and just fell in love with it. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Awesome. So what would you say, is the number one top thing that Coach Angular helped you with? <laughs> Ooh, number one. I think maybe the mindset portion of it, the, yeah. just the confidence. Um, yeah, just tell me more. Love the fact that you always instill that, just enjoy it and be happy about it. You know, I, I love the fact that you said that's what you want your athletes to be, just happy doing what they're doing. 
Um, so for me, I think it's the mindset, just switching that, hey, it is something that maybe I, not maybe, that I can achieve, right? Just sticking to it. So, so I, I have this aspiration. I want the athlete that's happy and confident and help me out to understand. And you tell yourself, I am that happy and confident athlete. Is that how your mindset works? I'm just trying to understand. How do you do it? Um, Let's help other athletes who also need confidence. Or right. is it more of so, doing and believing? Or is it yes. more of digging into your mindset of what really goes into your head? For me, um, obviously, I think there's a lot of, you know, I, I'm guilty of a lot of negative talk and thing like, there's no oh. way I can. No way I can. And, and um, just trying to switch that to, yes, I can. You know, it's just, just you know, I'm going to get slowly, but, you know, just, I think, I think just that, that confidence and, and killing that negative talk. So gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. is that, um, are your small wins on the workouts help you out with the confidence? For sure. For sure. For so, sure. Uh, are there other things? Like, for example, I probably assign you workout that at the same time, like, Ooh, what is she making me do? I don't even think I could do that. But then when you did it, you're actually able to do it. Were there some instances like that that came across or maybe oh, like yeah. nothing? Yeah. Well, you remember I posted one day, I think coach is trying to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> you remember what was that? I don't remember actually, because there's many of the posts. Uh, it was some extensive workout. Um, I think <laughs> uh, one of the, one of the big uh, leg workouts, I remember mm -hmm. I even burst like a little thing, but I took it to the extreme too. I just figured, you know what, I'm going to give it all I got. Um, but yeah, after that I had a run and then it was one of the weekends, okay. you know, big okay. workouts. Hey. And afterwards, I'm like, okay, but I got through it. And yeah, you feel a lot more accomplished. And you feel like, well, if I achieve that, what next? And then let me build on that. Got it. Nice. Um, there's actually a big thing that you, um, let me let me just ask you more clarity on this one. Um, this one, uh, this one was after your uh, 70, uh, no, not 70.3, Olympic distance. Mm -hmm. And you said, uh, coach, you get you, uh, your great tips on mindset and mental control helped me tremendously. You have no idea how I kept repeating some of your lines over and over, and it helped me push myself to do my best. I kept giving myself encouragement and stuck to positive thoughts. Do you remember any lines at all? Suck it up. <laughs> ah, suck it up on race day. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I do say that on race day. Not yeah. like training, well, some training, yeah. as long as there's no pain, right? Right. So um, when I was on my swim, I do remember you told me, you know, yeah, your heart rate's going to, you know, elevate just because of the adrenaline rush and you're in the race and whatever. But, you know, it's the same as if you were on land, you know, it's your heart rate is up, but you're still breathing. You're still, you know, just having that control because I feel that if not, you do get anxiety and you get very, you know, nervous about the fact that you're you know, you feel that adrenaline going and okay. you told me, well, oh, the heart, the high heart rate is just your adrenaline. It's not something that's going to kill you, you know? And I started telling myself, you know, this is normal, you know, this is part of the race. Yeah. This is part, you know, of, the, of getting through to it. But also um, I remember when I was coasting down, looking at the views, I kept on saying, you know, enjoy this. This is beautiful. This is why I'm here, you know? Yeah. So just eating my that. Repeat that to myself. Yeah. With, your, with that mindset, you actually got sub two minutes per 100 yards on an ocean swim. Where in two months ago, you can't even fathom of actually finishing an ocean swim or even just in the bay shore where in it, there's on a bay where in there's no waves, there's not really current there, but you got sub two minutes for 100 yards because of all the things that you've done. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That's, that's, that's great. Um, there's I, was trying to catch, I, was, I was thinking I was trying to catch Vanetta. <laughs> <laughs> got it. <laughs> well, there you go, Vanetta. So you also said here, as Ken shared earlier, triathlon training with Pisces Fox has changed our lives. What does that mean by uh, never felt, have you felt this healthy, strong, and confident? Yeah. Yeah, well, for, yeah, for me. That, that, that sounds like a very big uh, word for me. Yeah. Because honestly, I just want to be the best athlete you can be trained, you know, like reframe your mindset. Tell us more about that, changing lives. Well, how? You know, like that happened. I I wasn't, I wasn't the healthiest person. I wasn't taking good care of my body. Uh, and, and that's actually draining, you know, just physically, emotionally, and, you know, you name it. Um, so with that, you know, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty confident person for the most part, but 
um, I just feel like you just feel a lot more powerful, I want to say, you know, or, or the fact that you've accomplished something, it just makes you feel that much more confident about yourself and like feeling like, oh, well, if I achieve this, then what next, you know, um, and I think um, knowing that, you know, there's going to be failure, you're going to end up, you know, falling, you know, uh, failing on something, but just, uh, you know, moving past that. So for me, just the whole lifestyle change as far as my healthy eating, you know, dropping the weight, um, sticking to it, um, the accomplishments. And um, I don't know, I, I've just really changed also, I think just from the confidence itself, you know, it, it just makes you think differently, maybe. Well, I do think, I believe you. <laughs> it's big. I mean, confidence is big. When you actually, you know, like, hey, this is triathlon. If I can do it in triathlon, maybe I can, why can't I not do anything else? Right. Yeah, I think I think you learned a lot about your body, how it works, how to take care of it during the process, right? You weren't expecting that, were you? Not not to this extreme, no, no, I just extreme, extreme and, transformation. And, we're talking about that, and <laughs> and then I got the maybe a Iron Man one day in my head, so well, I'm still thinking about that. Half. There's that half <laughs> coming up, yeah, yeah. There's the half coming up. So besides the, uh, you know you know, having to see transformation in your life. The question is that how about the people around you, your daughter, your mm -hmm. coworkers, has, have, you changed, have you seen any influence of you, your transformation just in the past two months? Uh, well, my daughter, when I told her I did sign up for La Quinta, she texts me, she goes, you're officially a crazy woman. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is that a good thing? <laughs> yeah, no, but she, she's very proud of us. So she's very happy. And she likes the fact, you know, so she's off to college, right? She's, she's been in college the last seven years now. Um, but she's always, obviously she wants something for us, something positive for us to stick to something, you know, that's constructive for us. So she's really happy and excited for us and rooting us on. And um, after the try, she, you know, she texts us, she goes, I'm very proud of you guys and brought me the little flowers and stuff like that. And um, it's just very encouraging, obviously, right? And, and she's, she's a very athletic person herself, but not into triathlons, you know, doing the gym and stuff like that. Very fit girl too. Um, so, so for her, it's big, it's big to focus on, you know, healthy lifestyle and eating right and all that. So I think seeing her parents do that, you know, she's proud of that and it makes her happy. And then at work, they tease me, you know, because of, like, you know, if I work <laughs> and hard time about that, but yeah, it's, it's been enjoyable, but I like it. Um, my mom, my mom, you know, she's Hispanic, obviously for her, it's like, what are you, what are you doing? You're going to kill yourself. Oh, right? I heard that from my but, parents. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it's hard for them to understand why are you doing this, you know, but, you know, I know that deep down, you know, once she sees what it really is, she'll, she'll be supportive of it, but. I love yeah. it. It looks like, um, you know, you just went into action. You know, you have this goal without knowing the how without knowing whether the people around you will be okay with it, but you just went for it because you want that lifestyle change mm -hmm. and you're getting it. And then maybe it's not everyone's actually agreeing to it. And I love it. The, the main reason is because that's how I was back then. Be mm -hmm. Before I was like signing up here, buying all this, investing in myself with coaching and videos like, what is she doing? And at the <laughs> time she wasn't even exercising. And you know mm -hmm. what I did? I just basically focus on the doing on the action and let that radiate to the people around mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Can you relate to that? You're saying, is that the same way you think? Yeah, yeah, well, you know, and when he doesn't feel like joining me, I just said, okay, well, I'll see ya. And then you start, I see that he's getting dressed and I'm like, okay, he's coming, you know? But there's times which, you know, he'll he'll go do it with me even though he's not really all gun ho about going because he knows I'm gonna be there. So yeah, um, yeah I think Mark just do it too yeah uh her husband tony marco also did well actually yeah congratulations reggie saying i hear you on iron man i get emotional just talking about iron man with coach yep reggie's gonna do his iron man 70.3 our zone in two weeks nice all right welcome reggie reggie all right well from feisty fox coaching and the rest of our support team we congratulate you for actually having that transformation within two months. Remember athletes in Ironman and beyond, Yesenia, you still like, whoa, how do you even ride this bike? That was only two months ago. Two months ago, she was 20 pounds 
heavier, but then now she's feeling healthier, feeling good about herself. And not just that, she's been way two minutes for 100 yards in an ocean swim with confidence, with confidence. And that confidence just radiated to actually other areas of her life. She's not dropping the ball in her other commitments. She's been able to actually manage her time. And it's just the beginning, Yanya. And I know if you can, you know, in terms of budget, you, I know you would actually do a 70.3 now because I know you are ready because of the training that you've been doing and putting it. And what I wanted to tell everyone, you may not know the house right now, but if you start with a mindset and you believe even the slightest thing and you can actually find a friend or a mentor or a coach that can believe before you even believe in yourself that 100%, you can do anything. Yep. Because that's what happened to Yesenia. And you. she's been amazing. <laughs> uh, been amazing. So um, proud. So proud. Yeah. No, I, I thank you both for everything. I mean, you guys have been amazing to me and, and you know, helped me, you know, achieve the levels that I have so far. And without you, I don't think I would have known where to start, you know, um, and to obviously, you know, all the other team members that I see. And it's always fun to see the rest of them when we do meet up and um, and all the encouragement and support that they give us, you know, they're great examples. And, you know, like I tell you guys, you know, I want to be half that Ironman that you guys are one day, you know, and, and just uh, very, very helpful. Everybody's been very friendly, very welcoming and, you know, just been enjoying being getting to know everybody. And honestly, I wanted to tell you, Yesenia, yes, you may not be officially the 70.3 finisher or the Ironman finisher yet but your mindset right now is is that Ironman that Ironman finisher has the same mindset as you do have right now mm. you don't need to act of course it's a bonus you get the finisher's medal but like I said it starts here and I know when I see an Ironman finisher even before that person even committing to it and Thank that's you. okay so yeah so yeah that will happen in your own time Okay, which is actually La Quinta 70.3. And I know there may be another race before that as we were planning. Okay, so it's just the beginning for Yesenia. So everyone who's been inspired by Yesenia's story, so much growth ahead of her, anyone who's been inspired, and that's what we do in Feisty Fox Coaching. We, bu we help busy high achievers crush their races no matter what your background is whether you're actually cha having challenges with swimming, cycling, running, whether you know how your nutrition goes or whether your mindset needs help, okay? So it's not about just not knowing, it's actually, you know, just building the confidence. I mean, mm -hmm. wouldn't that be amazing that, hey, you learn new sports and then now you're actually developing this eating habits because you wanna be the best athlete you can be, right? And it's not just about that 70.3, sure, you could be spending money on it, but guess what, it's your health. What would you exchange for your health, for you actually living happily, enjoying, building that confidence, which can be radiated to other uh, areas of your life, okay? We love working with athletes who are excited about achieving big goals or who actually have, you know, like giving them a chance to like, what is it out there for me? What am I capable of? What if I can actually do it, okay? Well, what if you can actually do it? Right now you've been listening and actually that's how you said you started, you know, just watching other athletes say, hey, maybe I could do that. And it's slowly kind of like, whoop, let me take a pee. Mm, mm. I don't want it. Mm, <laughs> let me try again. You know, just like, you know, you listening of other athletes and then, and then you would start asking and telling yourself, why not me? What's different about you saying and you? That was only two months. And then maybe, you know, like, let's say, uh, coach, I'm not ready. Maybe next year, 2022, 2023. And that's totally fine, right? That's totally fine. It's about you. And because we don't coach everyone, we coach those athletes. We help athletes who are ready right now to take actions. And if in case, you know, like, oh, I don't know the house. And, you know, that's, where, that, that's what we're here for. It, we make it easier for you all. We're in it step by step. And it's not just about training, like what Yesenia said. It's the training and the next is the physical training. It's not just swim, bike and run. I mean, you've learned technique on the cycling or the running, those skills, yeah. right? The strategies, the nutrition, the body maintenance. You used to, uh, used to feel knee pain. And then now 
It's, in, it's insane. She doesn't even have to see a PT or a doctor, although, you know, those help are, you know, we give those too. We have our, uh, our, our, in our team, we have medical doctor, we have PT, we have registered dietitian, we have professional mistress. It's kind of like a one-stop shop because I want my athletes to be like, they have everything there, right? But then you got to be ready for it. You got to commit to yourself first because to us, we're okay, right? But then once you're ready, here you go, step by step. Do not feel overwhelmed. And, you know, like Yesenia said, like if you're one of those overachiever, like I want to learn everything now, which is, yeah, it's good to mm-hmm. learn everything. Yeah. But then it can be overwhelming. And then now what now? It's not sustainable. Right. You want to do it at your own pace. And if you're those athletes, like who's stuck, like, let's say, you know, uh, maybe I just need to learn more how to build confidence. Maybe it's only a little pep talk with coach. You know, that could be, so you, we invite you, just let us know down below if you want that, okay? Help, you know, just put help under the comment and we can actually have a 15 minute call. It's not too long and it's not about coaching at all. It's actually more of how we can help you, give you more tips of like maybe top three tips that you can do right now. And that we can also determine whether you're the type of athlete that we can coach right now. Because we only coach athletes who are ready to actually receive that transformation, right? Because, you know, when I was back then, you know, like, I want to achieve that thing. Am I ready for that? Because when you want to achieve big goals, there's a exchange for that. Hard work, you refraining your mindset, you being able to communicate your friends and family, you being able to accept that it's not ever, it's not going to be perfect, right? So are you ready for it? Okay. Is that making sense? Because that's what uh, Yesenia had to do. You know, am I ready for it? The match is ready. Great. Okay. So if you guys want to have that 15 minute call with me and or Vineta, we do that for free. And this is basically to help our athletes here in Ironman and Beyond on top of the free live training here. If you guys have any questions, we have resources here, you know, about nutrition. There's actually nutrition, the swimming, you know, any resource about injury. There's a lot here in Ironman and Beyond. <laughs> you can go over or you could raise your hand so we can just direct you and you save your time from looking around. All right. So last but not the least, we have a question for you, Yosenia. Ready? What are the maybe top two, three things that you can share with us? Actually, specifically for our athletes listening right now, what can they do? Okay. If they're like, you know, they're one of those who want to change their lifestyle and they don't even know triathlon. They don't have a bike. You know, you had a hybrid bike. You did not know how to clip and clip. You had no idea what nutrition, you know, in training. Basically zero. Yeah, what would you advise to those athletes? Basically, what would you advise to the old Yesenia? And it was not a long time ago. It was only two months ago. What would you advise to those athletes? Yeah, well... As cliche as it is for me, it's more like just sign up and do it. And it's, you know, one day at a time, you know, it's just it, it's big steps and don't get discouraged. But I think for me, it's more like you sign up and once you're signed up, what are you doing to build to get there? Yeah. You know, and it just forces you to start, you know, and, and once you start seeing, you know, the, the, the positive side of it, you know, or how it's been helpful, beneficial, or how, you, you know, how you're feeling. I just feel it just encourages you. And the next day you feel like, oh, well, I felt good doing that next day. So it's just a matter of signing up and doing it. All right. I would say signing up and committing to it. So signing up is basically committing to yourself. Yep. Yeah. It's, it is an investment on yourself, you know? Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. Looks like we still have people here. All right, everyone. That's been our live today. And again, thank you so much, uh, Yusenia. I'm glad today is your kind of like our semi-recovery week. <laughs> we got you on call. All right. But thank you so much for your time. So for the next live weekly training, everyone, we have good next coming up next Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. I'll see you guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye.